the ACC on ESPN. A gorgeous night in Tallahassee, Florida for a top 10 rivalry matchup between 7th ranked Florida and 8th ranked Florida State. Two teams that are eyeing a spot at home if they get to the Super Regionals. The top eight teams, as determined by the selection committee, will have that chance. These two teams with a big opportunity for an RP RPI boost tonight. Adam Amin, Amanda Scarborough from Joanne Graff Field. And I don't really need to sell this to you. Florida and Florida State, it's seemingly come down to the wire every year. This is the first of two meetings this year. Three of the last four have been decided on a walk-off. It's been what we can expect. Juice is flowing, so emotional. Two competitive teams, two of the top teams in the country getting to go at it in a midweek brawl. Now, obviously this is a deep Florida State team, but they've gotten a really good punch from a freshman this year in Sydney Cheryl. Cheryl is not just one of the best freshmen in the country. She's one of the best hitters in the country. This is what she just did last week. She was not only USA Softball Player, National Player of the Week, but also NFCA and ACC. She garnered every single award you can think of because of how she performed and how she hit. She's so clutch, one of the best hitters for this FSU team. Uh, you were just in Tuscaloosa to see Florida take two of three from Alabama in a very emotional series. It came down to the third game, and it came down to a freshman in Danielle Romanella. She put the team on her back. Adam just as a freshman and it all started because Alabama scored in the bottom of the third but then she came up in the top of the fourth and hit a two-run double down the line to tie up the game then she later got a chance in the sixth inning to hit a home run and she did she stepped up the first home run of her career Florida would go on to win it three to two and not just win that game but win the series on the road in Tuscaloosa off of her bat she is getting the start tonight in fact Danielle Romanello will be in the seventh spot tonight, just her fifth career start. And a little bit of a mix-up at the top of the lineup, Kaylee Kavistad, for the first time this year, is going to be in the leadoff spot. And she'll take a strike to start it off. Kylie Hansen, the grad transfer from Florida Atlantic University, in the circle tonight for the Seminoles. Kavistad skies one to right field. Mason is there for out number one. What a big pickup for Florida State because they not only gain an All-American, they gain experience in the circle. And it's not every day that you gain a senior All-American pitcher on your team to add to your pitching staff. She came to Florida State with a good rise ball, and she's grown confidence with her curveball and drop ball to make her more dynamic. She's a veteran. She has that experience, and she's just gaining confidence as she grows in age. Nicole DeWitt down in the count. Back in the two spot where she's been in most of the year. Having a career offensive season, Nicole DeWitt who's been as steady as it comes in the Florida lineup. One, two. One thing that you know when you're going to go up against Florida and pitch against them, so for Hanson in the circle, is that they have some of the best eyes in the country, if not the best eyes as collectively as a team, that you're going to see in Division One softball. They take their walks. They know the strike zone. They don't chase often. And as a pitcher, you know that going into this game. Florida, over the last several years, has been one of the best teams in the country in on-base percentage. They come into action tonight, second in the nation by percentage points behind UCLA. Kavistad, DeWitt, and Lorenz, the first three in this Florida lineup, are the top three on-base percentages career-wise in Florida history. So these are all very difficult outs right at the top of the Gator order.
Quick visit out to Kylie Hansen. She battles. Packed house tonight in Tallahassee. This at bat will go at least nine pitches. It's been a tough out. I, I mean, it. The game changes so much from your freshman year to your senior year. And for Nicole DeWitt, she's been steady, but she's gained more power. She's gained more confidence. She's always been competitive and a pesky out at the plate. It's the power this year that's been different for her. Excellent at bat, and she draws a one-out walk. Jesse Warren is the name to know, has been dealing with a foot injury over the last month. She's back at third base for the first time since mid-March. Was actually still wearing her protective boot during warm-ups and stretches. You see that brace on the right leg. It was a broken bone in her right foot against North Florida back on March the 10th that kept her out for a chunk of time. Lorenz skies it over towards Warren for out number two. Casas, Claveman, and Mason left to right in the Florida State outfield. The Seminoles are fifth in the country in fielding percentage. Here's the freshman, Jordan Matthews. Struggling a bit as of late. Just three for her last 23 at the plate. But having a solid freshman campaign hitting near 300. One, two. Laying off that rise ball. Yeah, you can tell that Hansen has a little bit of upspin. I think we're going to see a lot of pop-ups in tonight's game. Usually with the rise ball pitcher, you get a lot of balls in the air, sometimes to the outfield, sometimes to the infield, but spread all amongst the field, and then sometimes a tendency to leave the yard too because you're more up in the zone. A strikeout to close the first for Kylie Hansen. She never appeared in a game against the Florida Gators when she was at FAU. Her first appearance against the Gators, a good one in the first. Going with that rise ball up and in at Jordan Matthews. That's her bread and butter pitch. That's what she loves to throw. The Florida State Seminoles getting it done with doubles this year. The nation's leading team with 40 doubles, averaging better than six runs per game. This is what they bring out tonight. A lot of speed and some gap power. Love that 3-4 punch there with the freshman Cheryl backed up by the senior Jesse Warren. Jesse Warren, one of the best hitters in FSU history. That's where the pop is in this lineup. We'll face Alicia Ocasio, the senior and two-time All-American. really has become the true number two behind Kelly Barnhill this year. Yeah, and because she's behind Barnhill, who loves to throw a rise ball, Casio has transformed into more down in the zone this year. A pitcher who, just like that, with her rise ball, can go up. She, she kind of can do everything, and that's just her MO because she's one of the best athletes in the country. She can play any position, throw any pitch, and she has wicked movement. She's constantly mixing her speeds, but it's that movement that gets a lot of swings and misses, and she really... 
pounds the zone. She throws a ton of strikes, mm -hmm. barely walks anybody, has only walked seven all year. And because she's around the plate, sometimes, just sometimes, she might have a tendency to miss. And this is on Sunday in game two against Alabama, where she left a couple of pitches too sweet over the plate. Alabama, with an aggressive mindset, came up swinging against her. But it was the height of the pitch and the location that was just too sweet for those swings. And out of the park, two home runs went against her. Works at a fast pace. She likes that. She's a senior. A ton of experience for Florida in the circle with her. That number still blows me away. 104 Ks to seven walks, two of which came on Sunday against Alabama on the road. Picked up by the third baseman, Nicole DeWitt, and she retires Callie Herod for out number one. She's solid over there at third base. She's solid in all parts of her game. Easily goes to her forehand, but she got there so quick that ball easily could have gone to Reynoso if she hadn't have been ready, hadn't have been quick, hadn't have had such a good reaction. Nicole DeWitt just really does it all. Moving over to third base this year after being the second baseman the last two years. Carson Gordon takes ball one. Gordon, 19 game on base streak right now. Junior from Miami who's become a mainstay at first base this year. Had to replace a very good power hitter in Alex Powers. Speaking of power, deep to center and the Knowles take the lead on a bomb from Gordon. Remember how we were talking about pitch location? Yep. Look at the location of this pitch. It's just too sweet. Over in the middle of the plate, it's up in the zone. It's slightly elevated. And Adam, look, this hits. I, I don't know what you call this thing that holds our <laughs> camera, guys, but this that would have gone, what, 280 feet? I mean, center field's 220 to deep center field, and that, that just would have kept going. It hit the very top of it, not the middle, not the bottom, the very top. That was a bomb. Seventh of the year for Carson Gordon. Here is Sydney Sherrill poking one down the line, and it's foul. Two strikes on Sydney Sherrill, the freshman of the week nationally. Down she goes. This is a Florida State team that really got it done with power the last few years. Hasn't necessarily been the case this year, but as we talked about, there are spots in this lineup that have a lot of pop, and Gordon showed it off there. This is where the real pop is. Jesse Warren, good to see her back playing in the field. As you mentioned, that broken foot in mid-March had taken her out of commission playing defense. This is the first time she's been back at third base since the injury. Travis Wilson, one of the assistant coaches for Florida State, was telling me that because it's that right foot, it's hard to generate as much power as a right-handed hitter. She can't really drive off that right foot. Yeah, you always think of it that the front side's more for direction, back side is more for power. And she's strong. I mean, she's proven that in her career. We've seen her hit home run after home run after home run, and she's always in the conversation with coaches of who's the best hitter in the country. Her name is somebody that always comes mm -hmm. up. But Ocasio fans a pair after the Carson Gordon homer gets Florida State on the board. 
Got to feel good playing on your home field. Remember, this is a rivalry matchup, and Carson Gordon welcomes the Gators to town with a solo shot about, what, 280, 300 <laughs> feet? That went so far. Carson Gordon's solo home run has given Florida State the lead as we head to the second inning on a beautiful night at a packed house in Tallahassee, Florida. Home run number seven of the season for Carson Gordon. And she gives Kylie Hansen a lead with which to work. And she deals to Hannah Adams, another freshman in this Florida lineup. Adam, I have an important question for you. What and you got? The thing that I can't think of the name of that the camera guy is on, what's the proper name for that? Because it's going to drive me crazy what Carson Gordon hit with their home run. Do we call that a lift? What's the? It's the lift. Okay, it's no, you, a got, lift. you got it. <laughs> JLG lift. Okay. <laughs> Fancy and proper. Okay. I wasn't going to be able to go the entire game Listen, until the, I knew the, what the, that was. The fact that you gave the proper terminology, <laughs> that, I mean, that just speaks to your professionalism. I, I didn't even know what to Google there. So, <laughs> all right. Our esteemed producer, <laughs> Magaranowitz, telling us that that is indeed. JLG? The JLG there. <laughs> Here's Sofia Reynoso. She hit her first home run of the season on Sunday. And lost to Alabama. Gordon's out of room. Yeah, and that was on a pitch that was basically at her eyes, yeah. and she went up and got it. But so Kylie Hansen, who likes to throw up in the zone, going to have to be a little bit more careful here knowing that she can hit it out. Is that an adjustment you think Florida's making right off the bat? They know it's going to be rise ball heavy perhaps? I, I think you know that it's going to be spinning up more than it's going to be coming down, but that's where Hansen has grown so much in the circle where Lonnie Alameda has worked with her on throwing more down the zone with transforming her curveball and her drop ball to give her different looks later on in the game. But why not early on go with what your strength, go with what you're most confident in? That's a rise ball. What a snare by Warren. Looked pretty healthy there. As much as we love to talk about Jesse Warren's offense, the FSU coaching staff loves to see Jesse Warren out there on defense. Plays the hot corner. She backhands that ball. You see she's playing a little bit in front of third base. And Reynoso hit that ball hard. No big deal, though, for Warren. Gets to make the easy throw to one. Here is Danielle Romanello taking a strike. They missed that defense at third base. Oh, two. Romanello protecting the plate there. SEC Freshman of the Week in a crucial game on Monday night in conference play. The game tying two run double in the fourth and the go ahead home run in the sixth, the first of her career, all off of an All American in Alexis Osorio. Beautiful pitch, clipping the outside corner. It's her second strikeout of the game. Both of them getting the third out of the inning. This time, a little bit of screwball rise ball action to get the looking K to Romanello. Lani Alameda says, you want to be in those games where you can feel your heart pounding and you have to learn to slow it down. That's Florida, Florida State. Three of the last four decided on a walk-off. 
even though Florida's had the better of this all-time rivalry, certainly better of it since Lonnie Alameda has been the head coach at Florida State, the games have always seemingly come down to the last pitch, the last batter, the last out. It has been awesome to be a part of this the last couple of years. So we Casas stands in against Ocasio to start the second. Yeah, they set the bar pretty high for a rivalry <laughs> game. Absolutely. They actually had to cap the amount of fans that are coming in tonight. They had about 2,500 in terms of the paid attendance last year here in Tallahassee. And they decided that they have to cap the amount of fans allowed in the seats tonight. So it's going to be about 1,500 plus anybody in the balcony, in the berms, and watching from that parking garage <laughs> beyond left field where Casas sends one foul. Well, you think about what an emotional week this has been for Florida where they had to travel to Tuscaloosa, who leads the nation in attendance. And I think on their Sunday game, they had over 3,700 fans. And here you come into a hostile environment just because it is a rivalry. And Towards Boss, one down. Everybody wants to be here to see not uh, some of them, like Coach Alameda said, definitely our softball fans would be here anyway, but some of them just come because it's Florida versus, Florida, uh, versus Florida State. There is the five-time ACC Coach of the Year, Lonnie Alameda. 18 straight NCAA tournaments for Florida State. She's been to one each of her first nine years at the helm of the Seminole program. After taking over for the legendary Joanne Graff, the namesake of this field. Who's here tonight? She made the trip to the booth to say hello. Always good to visit with Dr. Graff. Pretty cool. I was so happy that she came by and said hi. She said she's doing a lot of biking, a lot of hiking. <laughs> <laughs> Less softball, more of that. <laughs> One and two on Cassidy Davis. Ocasio with her third strikeout. She's retired four straight since giving up the home run. We'll take it to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. I guess you can call it the city of champions based on what we've seen the last couple of months. Our MLS match presented by Audi. Philadelphia Union taking on Orlando City. Two teams that are jockeying for position right now in the Eastern Conference. That'll be Friday at 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Anna Shellman, the seven hitter and the catcher for the Seminoles at the plate. You mentioned that Ocasio has shut down the last four hitters since that home run and because she's changing speeds more. She has the ability to so well mix speed, specifically with her off-speed drop ball that moves down the zone, and she can go up there with her rise ball. She can do so much. I, I, don't, I can't think of one thing, because she's such a good athlete and such a good pitcher, that she can't do in this game. In this and, game and yeah. I think if you told her to go catch, she'd say, okay, I, I can do it. Put me in. And came inside. Ocasio was a heavy hitter as a pitcher the first two years of her career. And then last year, Tim Walton asked her to be a bat in the lineup and to be a position player. And because she is such a great athlete, not only did she play right field, not only did she play third base, but she continued to pitch and had the best offensive season of her career. She's back in the circle this season and having a dynamite year. Another strikeout. 5 and oral retired, four by a swinging K. Couldn't ask for a better night here in Tallahassee for this rivalry contest that heads to the third inning. Jordan Roberts cuts and misses. One of just two right-handed batters in the starting lineup for the Gators tonight. A very lefty, heavy lineup. Yeah, you're like a diamond in the rough if you're a righty in the Florida lineup. And, and one of the other things that we've grown accustomed to in the Florida lineup is a lefty, heavy, offensive lineup. 
<laughs> now with that being said, Lonnie Alameda may end up going to Megan King, her lefty, who's been a mainstay in her rotation the last couple of years. So maybe a time or two, or perhaps even three if Hanson's rolling through the lineup, but at some point we would expect to perhaps see Megan King get a shot against these Gators again. You can tell how quickly that Kylie Hansen works. She wants to yes. get the ball. She wants to go. She wants to stay in rhythm. And I would think as a defender behind her, you got to love that because you are ju there's just no lulls when you're out on defense. She just gets the ball and goes. Travis Wilson, the assistant for Florida State, said that he likes the pace. Sometimes <laughs> Kylie Hansen can get a little ahead of herself. Yeah. But when the pace is good, typically... Kylie Hansen is good. As you get a look at the New Zealander, Travis Wilson. Good battle here by Roberts. Check swing. Appeal down to first, and Robert Guest says no swing. A couple of really good rise balls that Hansen has thrown to Roberts, and she has been able to hold back on him. Ends up taking it, recognizing that it's going to be out of the zone. Good eye there by Roberts to extend this down to a full count. Payoff pitch, just missed the outside corner. Well, this week's Sunday Night Baseball takes place from the Lone Star State. The defending champion Houston Astros will host the Texas Rangers. Justin Verlander expected to go for Houston. Originally, Doug Fister, his old Tiger teammate, was going to go on Sunday night, but he went to the DL yesterday. So we'll get to see Bartolo Colon more than likely on Sunday night baseball on ESPN and the ESPN app. There's the big Nolan Ryan fan, Morgan Claveman, in center field from Refugio, Texas. Of course, Nolan Ryan, an executive for the Rangers, and pitched for both the Astros and the Rangers. Alex Voss has checked in as the pinch runner for Roberts at first. And it's nothing and one on Ocasio. This just goes back to what you were talking about with Ocasio. Is there anything that she cannot do? She's now no. expected to not only hit in the nine spot, a crucial turnover spot in the lineup, but now bunt a teammate into scoring position. She's fast. Sacrifice successful. And an important that too, because Ocasio's not feeling the best about herself at the plate in the series that she had in Tuscaloosa against Alabama, struck out several times. So. Coach Walton gives her the sacrifice bunt sign. She lays it down on the second opportunity she has and gives her at bat up, gives herself up in order to turn over the top of the lineup. Remember Kayla Kavistad hitting leadoff for Florida. So now she's up with the runner in scoring position, a position that she is used to being in as she usually hits in the middle of the lineup. It was Kavistad who drove in the lone run in Gainesville last year in this rivalry game. She had the walk-off. <laughs> it's not only the first time this season that she's up in the leadoff spot. First time in her career. This is a senior. And 
Yeah, that's a lot of bat speed. Fouls it away. It really is. And with that bat speed, she also has the best eye on the team, Coach Walton said, just last season, that she had 67 walks in one season. Has about half of those so far this year. She just passed Asia Pakulba for second all-time on the Florida walks list. Only Lauren Hager is ahead. It's a scary combo to put together when you're a pitcher going up against somebody like her because she has the power yet such a good eye. So you have to be perfect when you face her. Two, two. Hammer to right. Back at the wall, over Mason. Voss had to wait at second base. She's going to get the turn towards home. Tie game. And this ball was smoked to right field out to Elizabeth Mason, who's just a freshman out there. This is her first rivalry matchup going up against Florida. This pitch is too sweet. It is belt high right up Kavistad's alley. Not played great by Mason. I think if she played it perfectly, she would have had a chance to catch that. But then the relay in, they were all unsure of themselves. They could have had an opportunity to not have a run scored because Alex Voss had to wait to see if Mason would catch that because it was such a close play out there in right field. Really poor relay by FSU defense. DeWitt fouls a butt. If that's a clean relay throw, Voss maybe doesn't get the turn, although Tim Walton was pretty adamant about sending her home but maybe there's a play at the plate if that's a clean relay throw absolutely dewitt sends one to center claveman there two down it's a big deal to answer back early in the game too, yeah. instead of waiting until the sixth, seventh inning when nerves start to get a little bit higher because you know the end of the game is approaching. But Kavistad, a senior, just being able to step up and, and tie up this game. So now here is Lorenz. Well, they uh, are in position almost like an intentional walk here with Shelna out of the crouch. That's exactly what it is. First base open, Amanda Lorenz. Yep. A deadly hitter in their lineup. A clutch hitter for them. So much respect for Amanda Lorenz. One of those other players, kind of like Jesse Warren, that coaches just have so much respect for. Yeah, understandably so. But these four pitches by Hanson have to be executed. You can't take them for granted all too often. I've seen one of these pitches just get away from the catcher. Lorenz has been a leadoff hitter most of the season. But in the three spot where she is just as productive. She's now been on base in all 41 games this year and 165 of 172. Can you believe that? So now they'll go after Jordan Matthews here. Two on, two out. The Kavistad RBI has tied this game. Here's Casas to close the inning. This is what we expect when it's Gators and Knowles tight. We're through two and a half. A hit apiece, a run apiece. You can't see us in the booth, but we are waving. We are waving to our friend. <laughs> Hi. See? Yeah, see? He, he, he heard us. Hey, buddy. Oh, my gosh. He wants to get in. He wants to see the game. Someone get that dog to this broadcast booth right now. <laughs> Elizabeth Mason stands in. There he is. Oh, he's one of the several fans that were not allowed in tonight. Again, we told you they're capping the amount of people that can come to the game tonight. DeWitt throws out Mason to start off the third. 
Seeing Ocasio go a little bit more to that rise ball, yeah. and you have to think about why that is. This is not a three-game series against Florida State where she has to throw after Kelly Barnhill, who's known for her rise ball. So now Ocasio gets to use all her tools. She doesn't have to look like anybody else because Florida State will not face Barnhill tomorrow, nor did they face her yesterday. Here's the nine-hitter, Morgan Claveman. But tell me about that, I mean, rotation construction when you were the number two pitcher in a three-game series, how much did you have to take away from your repertoire because of perhaps what a team had seen the day before or what they were going to see the day after? Well, it's really unique because not everybody is going to have the number of pitches that Ocasio has. So some might just not even have an option. If they're a drop ball pitcher, they're going to stick heavy drop ball. If they're a curveball pitcher, stick heavy curveball. But for her, she has so many tools that she even gets that opportunity to look different against a team. And also, I, I can't let this slide. We only had two game series, so I, I can't. That's fair. I can't that's not fair. say Old that. I wish we had three games. Exactly. And now they play three game series, but that's how much our game has changed, Adam. Every single year, something is changing about this game. A tap or foul. This is the first two ball count for Ocasio so far in this game. Speaking of the Big 12. Oklahoma in action tonight. One of the hottest teams in the country. And the two-time defending champion Sooners. Getting a little bit of a run for their money tonight Aren't from they? Wichita State. Yeah. Scores six to nothing right now. They're losing. Another strikeout for Ocasio. That's her fifth the first time through the order. She has retired seven straight since the home run from Gordon. Oklahoma came in with a 20-game home win streak. Wichita State up six to nothing on the defending champions as Callie Herod swings and misses. Wichita State, their first year in the American Conference, which has been a very good softball conference the last several years. They're a top 30 RPI team, so maybe shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but the Shockers maybe looking to shock the Sooners tonight. A 1-2-3 inning work by Ocasio. We'll chat with Florida State's head coach Lonnie Alameda on the other side of this break. Back in Tallahassee, tied up at one apiece. Florida and Florida State as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. Getting a chance to talk with Lonnie Alameda, the ACC Coach of the Year. And Coach, what did you see in those first couple of innings that gives you more confidence in Kylie Hansen against this offense? Lonnie, we appreciate the time as always. Thank you. For those of you who did not hear Lonnie there, we apologize for any technical difficulties. Great to chat with her this week. If you haven't had the chance to do so, all of our softball friends have done you all a great service. If you haven't gone to iTunes or Google Play, download the 7 Innings Podcast. First pitch off the bat of Hannah Adams. Flair to Cheryl for out number one. Lonnie Alameda happened to be a guest on the podcast, which was released today on iTunes, our second episode. And various members of our Women's College World Series broadcast teams will be on with multiple guests, including coaches and players each week. And Lonnie was a guest with Amanda Scarborough this week from Tallahassee. Reynoso to right. Mason makes the play. Two down. Yeah, we also kind of recap that 
Florida Alabama series. We talked a little bit about Oregon. We had a UCLA interview from Aaliyah Jordan, who's a stud freshman for yep. them. Uh, talked about the lefty love. I'll leave that one for you so you can see who the left-handed <laughs> pitchers are that uh, you need to keep an eye on. Two down for Romanello. Warren is there. How about a four-pitch inning thrown by Kylie Hansen? Retires the side in order. We head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two, three, and four for the Knowles coming up. Alicia Ocasio getting the start for Florida Gators tonight. Has thrown three full innings. And, man, she's been sharp. Other than that one pitch, the solo shot that was hit off of her, a home run, she has really battled back, spinning the ball well, moving the ball down the zone a little bit, up in the zone, changing speeds. Ocasio showing that she is a true veteran in this circle and knows how to battle back through a little adversity. Since that Carson Gordon home run, she's retired eight in a row, and it will be Gordon to lead things off for Florida State here in their half of the fourth inning. Important game for these two teams. They're both sitting in the top ten of the RPI right now. In fact, their RPIs match their current rankings. So that one home run was against Carson Gordon, where she didn't hit her spot, left the ball sweet over the middle of the plate, and hit a scissor lift, Adam. I'm getting blown <laughs> up on Twitter, but that's what you call it. We've officially found the name, and I can sleep tonight. <laughs> I know that was going to be just, just hitting you hard as you try to close your eyes tonight, yeah, buddy. Yeah, and everybody, everyone was um, pretty adamant, scissor lift. <laughs> so now we know. Gordon quickly ahead in the count, 2-0 here. I beg your pardon, 1-1. One Having a career season offensively for Gordon this year. Now into her junior campaign. Made an impact as soon as she entered the lineup. Her first career hit was a grand slam as a freshman. She's added 17 more home runs in her career, including one tonight. Hitters count here for Gordon. They'll draw a leadoff walk. Well, Friday from Philadelphia, it's our MLS match presented by Audi. Philadelphia Union hosting Dom Dwyer and Orlando City. For those of you watching tonight, soccer fans in the state of Florida, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Conference matchup between those two. Here's the freshman, Cheryl. She's an Oklahoma native. Ronnie Alameda said that she had a really tough fall when she first got to college. Wasn't really acclimating herself to fall ball in the collegiate level, but after she came back in January, Lonnie said that she was a completely different player. Hop handled by Adams. Not in time at first on the relay from Reynoso. Cheryl able to beat it out and prevent the double play. can tell she wants it. She's so competitive, that freshman of Cheryl. But Hannah Adams, another freshman, that's a tough hop right there. Could have eaten her up. It looked like it got her on the hand. She needs a couple of seconds maybe to recover as a close play at first base. But Cheryl did absolutely beat it out. But Hannah Adams, the freshman second baseman for Florida, no errors on the season. She's so sure-handed at second base. But maybe she did get hit by a pitch in the Alabama series, and that hop was tough on around the same spot on her right hand that she ended up getting hit by a pitch off of Alexis Osorio in that game. She's tough, real tough. 
Tim Walton says she loves to play defense. That's off the bag under the glove of DeWitt. Jesse Warren is aboard as Reynoso and Lorenz kind of collided out in left field down the line. And now two on with only one out for the Seminoles here in the fourth. You know it's a fair ball because right there hits the bag and almost ends up like a pop-up for Sofia Reynoso as she goes back on it, ends up sliding, kind of tripping up Amanda Lorenz. But Cheryl stayed put at second base, no big deal. Two on, though, for FSU. Here's Casas. big spot in this game it has felt like in this series the last few years that runs have come at a premium with two of the better pitching staffs in the country every opportunity is a big opportunity when these two teams meet Hard hit into center field. Cheryl around third to give the Seminoles the lead. Remember, it all started with the leadoff walk to Carson Gordon to get this rally started. And Florida State putting the ball in play and hitting it hard. Zoe Casas getting a pitch that's up in the zone. She keeps her barrel on top, her hands on top, and drives it to Alex Voss. She bobbled it there, but I do believe that Sydney Sherrill would have scored regardless from second base. She was going hard, and Alex Voss was playing pretty deep. But nonetheless, FSU takes the lead. Casas delivers. And now two on for Cassidy Davis. Jesse Warren came out. Deja Bush is the pinch runner at second base for the Seminoles. I think it's a good time to point out just the type of week that Florida has had. They had to travel to Tuscaloosa. They played that Monday night game. That was a 7 p.m. start time, so they couldn't get done and, and back to the plane to charter back home to Gainesville until about 10, 10.30, maybe even 11. I, you know, I wasn't there, so I don't know what time they hopped on the plane, but flew back to Gainesville, got to sleep in their own beds, went to school yesterday on Tuesday, had an off day, no softball, it's mandatory off day, and then today drove the two hours to get here to Tallahassee, so it's been a whirlwind. A lot of road games, a lot of emotional games for this Florida team, and not a lot of sleep. I guess we could call tonight the chop versus the chomp. Ocasio getting a talking to from Jen Rocha. She has thrown eight pitches out of the zone in this inning. She had thrown eight out of the zone in the first three innings combined. Well, remember, in just over 90 innings pitch, she'd only given up seven walks. Runners go. The throw to third, not in time from Roberts. Can talk about the power that Florida State has, and they absolutely have it, but Coach Alameda told us that they have a lot of speed too. Here they're being aggressive. Davis shows bunt, tries to pull Nicole DeWitt in. She didn't move. Didn't matter because there's so much speed over there stealing third. There is Deja Bush who lifts another bag. Davis with a big cut. Two and two. Some power at this spot for Florida State. Fouled away. 
Davis, who broke her nose in a freak batting practice accident in late March. You can see wearing that guard on the helmet. Not back to pitching just yet, but has been in the lineup as a hitter. She takes ball four. Ocasio with four walks all year entering tonight. And she has walked two in this inning. And now the bases are loaded with only one out. Pinch runner for Davis at first base is Karina Rosario. And it's Anna Shelna to the plate. Another big swing on a first pitch. <laughs> Pressure situation for Ocasio. She's been through the ringer in her career. Big spot here in the fourth. Another good pitch, and it's nothing in two. Kelly Barnhill starting to loosen up. O2. Fouled off. Yeah, when you say Ocasio's been through the ringer, she's pitched in just about every situation that you can imagine as a collegiate softball player. Remember, as a freshman, stepped in on the biggest stage at the Women's College World Series and beat Michigan as a starting pitcher in a series that went three games. Gets the strikeout here, two down. She was determined there, and I love that she stayed down in the zone. I think that this year, this is where she's best. She took a little bit off of this drop ball, had a little bit of bite at the end, but really, to me, that was the speed difference that got Shellnut out and the strikeout for her. Here's Mason. Takes a strike. Nothing in two. Trying to limit the damage in the fourth. Got her. The senior, the All-American with a couple of clutch Ks to end the Florida State threat in the fourth. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Cascades Park, 24 acre piece of land, renovated a few years ago on a beautiful night in Tallahassee, Florida. Jordan Roberts re-entering the game after being pinch run for Back at the plate. Walked and scored the lone Florida run back in the third inning. Two and one. and works herself back in at two balls and two strikes. Love the way so far that Hansen has just attacked this game. From pitch number one, she's been competing. And gets the strikeout after being down in the count.
7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow on ESPN. Our friends Greeny Beetle and Jalen Rose from New York City's South Street Seaport. Get up at 7 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow. There is Ocasio. I, the reason why that attack mentality that I just mentioned sticks out to me, Adam, is because I've seen multiple pitchers go up against Florida now, and it's a much different feel of going to so many three-ball counts, a ton of walks yeah. that opposing pitchers have given up to them, but not Hanson. She's going right at them, and to me, that's how you face a Florida offense. They're so patient, and that's been the case for Florida the last several years. Tops in the country in on-base percentage or near the top over the last four or five seasons now. They're going to take a few pitches. Ocasio drills one to center off the very top of the wall above Claveman. It'll go down as a double. That missed and not by much. A smooth level swing that Ocasio had in that at bat, but here's the issue that I have with it. It was an 0-2 pitch by Hansen, so as good as she's been, little too sweet. And that's how much, how good of an extension that Ocasio has in plate coverage with her swing. She drives this pitch, it's about a ball off the plate, but it's a little bit too high. Hansen was close to giving up a solo shot there with that swing, man. So now Kavistad with a chance to tie the game. She tied it back in the third. One and one. That's probably the pitch you wanted to see on 0-2 against Ocasio. Yeah, I think something a little bit more out of the zone to see if she would chase, especially knowing how she's been swinging it as of late. Look at Hansen again, not scared to come inside to these lefties, not scared to change speeds. A little bit of a smile, she knows where she misses. You can just tell she is a veteran pitcher for this Florida State team. What an addition for them to bring her onto their squad. Good movement, good speed, two and two. Well, I wonder if maybe Shell not wanted something else there. Well, they were going to discuss. Can maybe too, just making sure that they're on the same page yeah. with pitch calling. Shell not moving outside for this pitch, and it looked to me like it was a drop ball, though it did not move much <laughs> down, but <laughs> had some tight spin. But I think fooled Kavis down a little bit, and maybe Shell not too. Yeah, I wonder if just maybe she was expecting something else because she immediately signaled for time. Two two. Jammed and rolled to Cheryl. That'll advance Ocasio to third. Two down. Get productive out there for Kavistad, though, to advance Ocasio up another 60 feet, especially with the top of the Florida order. You have multiple threats here in a row yep. that could do some damage. This is the toughest part of this Florida lineup, right at the top of it. And DeWitt swinging away. That's that drop big, ball we yep. mentioned. Better location that's there for it, exactly too. That's exactly what you were looking for. You don't see swings and misses <laughs> like that very often by the Florida Gator nope. team of pitches that far out of the zone. Laid off that time. DeWitt has been a clutch hitter her entire career. She's got the tying run at third base in Ocasio. Two and two. Drop ball low and in. Right at Nicole DeWitt's knees. Over the top spin, really good location off the plate end. Just got a piece. Goes right back to that pitch, and this time she ends up fouling it off of her foot 
Oftentimes you'll see that with a drop ball low and in, whether it's a lefty hitter or a righty. If it's inside, low and in, moving down, you'll see hitters hit it into their foot. And this time it being her back foot, more times than not you see it with your front foot hit off of. Two, two. What an at-bat work by DeWitt. You said it. One of the best eyes in college softball, and she was able to work back off a couple of close pitches. Every at-bat of hers is so good. She's never an easy out. And here comes Lonnie Alameda. This Florida State program, cream of the crop in the ACC. But this is still a program that's seeking that elusive national championship. They've been to the Women's College World Series nine times. It's the most appearances in the country without a national championship. They've gotten close a handful of times. They've been to the World Series a couple of times in the last four or five years. But a very proud program trying to take that next step. Here's Lorenz. Hitting nearly 500 this year with runners in scoring position. One and one. Type of hitter that just has ice in her veins. You saw what she did last year in the Women's College World Series going up against Oklahoma. Two, one. Gators team that was beaten in two in the championship series. Of course, game one felt like a couple of games by itself. A 17-inning classic. Another walk drawn. And the bases are loaded. Lorenz took some really close pitches within that at bat, especially knowing that you have a freshman on deck. Lorenz being a veteran hitter, passed the bat to the freshman. Matthews 0 for 2. Good stop behind the plate by Shelna. Matthews has been very aggressive in her at bats, chasing some pitches, chasing some rise balls. Lays off that pitch for a strike. Even in the series against Alabama, she was doing that too. Kind of showed her youth. A really good hitter that Coach Walton knows he's going to be able to rely on. Big cut and it's one and two. Ocasio, the tying run at third. Popped up. Cheryl keeps the Seminoles in front, and Hansen gets out of the jam. Still a one-run game. Runs at a premium tonight. It was Carson Gordon's blast in the first inning that gave the Seminoles the lead. The Cavistad RBI in the third tied it up. And then Zoe Casas delivered in the bottom of the fourth inning. A 2-1 Seminole lead. Since that go-ahead RBI, both teams have at one point left the bases loaded. 
Only five hits allowed between Ocasio and Hanson. And we go to the bottom of the fifth in a one-run game. Morgan Claveman in the nine spot leads it off for Florida State. I love the balance of this game so far. The pitchers have made uh, just a couple mistakes here and there. The hitters have made them pay for it. And then the, the pitchers also have gotten a little revenge with, in some tough situations, making some tough outs with the bases loaded on both sides. Been a great game so far. Couple of defensive substitutions for Florida here as well. Run those down in a moment. Janelle Wheaton, an excellent defensive catcher, has checked in behind the plate. And Jamie Hoover, sophomore, is now in center field for Florida. Oh, right field, beg your pardon. Voss is in the center. Good pitch for a strike. When Claveman runs through the box, she goes so hard, and Ocasio just painting that inside corner, maybe even getting a little bit off the plate there against Claveman, makes it look like it's going to hit her. She's running in towards the ball. It's a good location for Ocasio. Claveman missed some time this year has been a mainstay as a leadoff hitter and as a center fielder, but this is only her 25th game this season because of a bunch of leg issues. Quad issue, hamstring issue. Off the glove of Reynoso. And there's some of that speed on display for an infield single for Claveman. Reynoso was playing so far in, respecting Claveman's speed, and that ball was hit just hard enough to get it by her. Reynoso is such a good shortstop. That all came with positioning, the speed coming off the bat, anticipating maybe a little something different, but perfectly placed by Claveman there to get it through. Back to the top and Callie Herod. Now this is interesting to me with the substitution that Florida just made behind the plate, bringing in Janelle Wheaton. And now having the speed of Morgan Claveman, who's got 119 steals in her career at first. She was going on the pitch, and it's over the head of Hoover. And Morgan Claveman can keep on running. 3-1 to one Florida State on a Herod triple. There's a new right fielder out there for Florida. It's Jamie Hoover. Jordan Matthews started the game. Claveman was put into motion. This is a hit and run. However, Jamie Hoover off the bat took about two or three steps in. She didn't drop step first, and that ball well goes over her head. Claveman in motion. There's going to be no chance to get her because she was in motion. It's a clutch hit right there by Herod. And now Gordon ahead in the count, 1-0. A home run and a walk for Carson Gordon tonight. And now a two-run Florida State lead. There's a strike. Better than 2,100 listed as the official attendance tonight. On the ground to Reynoso. The throw to first in time. But Herod scores. And it's a three-run Florida State lead. Second RBI for Gordon tonight.
Here's Cheryl. Scored on the Casas RBI back in the fourth inning, which gave Florida State the lead. They've tacked on since. 22 doubles for Cheryl. Yep. The NCAA record in a season is 29, and that's that's been held since 1996. To Adams. You don't see that from freshmen, stepping in with over 20 doubles. Already the Florida State record, by the way. The closest players in the Power Five conferences are Heather Bowen at Utah and Taylor Van Zee at Washington. They have 15, <laughs> and those are veteran players we're talking about. Yeah. Warren takes a strike. You know, the thing about her is that people are going to figure out who she is real that's fast. That's Kind of been hidden up to this point, but especially with her getting National Player of the Week last week, people are going to really start to figure her out and know about her. Isn't that the toughest adjustment once everybody has at least gotten a look at you on tape or whether in person? That's always got to be difficult for a good young hitter to make that adjustment. And then you add on the expectations yeah. that you put on yourself. and Not a great combo. you got to figure it out. Good problems to have, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Warren strikes out, but two across against Ocasio in the fifth. The Gators trying to get something going for the middle of their order. They're down by three in Tallahassee. Two across in the bottom half of the fifth inning for the Florida State Seminoles, a four to one lead. Some national news and notes. We mentioned Oklahoma. They were down six to nothing against Wichita State. They scored seven in the sixth inning and are now pitching for the win in the top half of the seven. Meanwhile, Michigan rolling as of late. Had a victory over their rival Michigan State tonight. As Hannah Adams leads off the Florida sixth. And the Pac-12 still dominating the top of the charts right now, RPI and ranking-wise. What about the Sooners tonight? I don't think anything phases them. I mean, they're a true team that has been through everything as well. Their entire team, they didn't lose anybody from their national championship team from last year. Adam skies one to left for Casas. Danny Morgan just checked in for Casas in left field. Casas stays in the game. She's listed now as the DP. Here's Reynoso. Sydney Romero, too, is having an incredible year at the plate, hitting close to 500 at times this season. Sitting in the 460s right now. She had another three hit night tonight for OU. And then Jocelyn Allo, who's a freshman for them, going to be one of those players in the National Freshman of the Year running. Great play by, her, by Kylie Hansen to snag that ball. <laughs> Just stealing a hit from so Sophia Reynoso. A reminder that Sunday Night Baseball We'll get a chance, you know, speaking of defending champions, I guess, there's your segue, Amanda. Houston Astros defending World Series champs taking on their AL West rivals, the Texas Rangers. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN with Baseball Tonight Sunday Countdown at 7 Eastern. Starting it all up. That's my team right there, Adam. That's the your Astros. Astros. Yeah. The most talented young teams in baseball still. Only got better. Boost in their pitching staff. Garrett Cole this year. Verlander back. He'll get the start on Sunday night. Garrett Cole married a former softball player. Played at UCLA. Amy Crawford. Just a good, good softball nugget. It's a small softball solid, world. Solid, solid addition. <laughs> my friend. Hansen with a chance for a perfect sixth. 
0-2. There it is. Pitching with a lot of confidence tonight in front of the home fans in Tallahassee. Her first action against the Gators, the former FAU Owl. Throwing a drop out here to Romanello. Two strikeouts for Romanello. Hansen gets her on a low end dropper. Alicia Ocasio's night is done. And Natalie Lugo will make just her 11th career appearance. The USA Softball Junior National Team member. Freshman from California. What a big opportunity for her, huh? Your team losing by three runs. Your job in coming into this game is to keep the score exactly where it's at. Zoe Casas hits one hard to DeWitt. Good recovery for the out. Florida has eight, nine, and one in their order due up in the seventh inning. But if you can get to one, that's where the real pop in the Florida lineup sits. So an opportunity for the Gators to get back in it if Lugo can keep it where it's at right now. First plate appearance for Rosario after she pinch hit, uh, pinch ran, beg your pardon, in the fourth. Nothing in two. Such a big week for Florida. I mean, not only were they on the road in Tuscaloosa against Alabama playing the Saturday, Sunday, Monday series, and they travel here for a midweek, and then they host South Carolina, a team in the SEC who is trending up, yep. has exceeded everyone's expectations of them. Get to play them in Gainesville. We'll get the weekend started with a little bit of MLS on ESPN, presented by Audi, the Philadelphia Union, hosting Dom Dwyer and Orlando City SC, Friday at 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Teams trying to move up in the East. Now what a job that Bev Smith has done with South Carolina this year. And they've had a difficult schedule already this season. It's not like they've played only the bottom half of the league. They have had a difficult schedule, and they're sitting in third right now in the SEC. That one came in and hit Rosario. So a lot at stake this weekend in terms of SEC standings, and South Carolina has this year had their highest ranking since I think back in the 90s. Top 10 ranking for them at one point this year after mm -hmm. they swept Tennessee. They just bursted in there. And rightfully so, swinging the bat, swinging well, pitching well, and then playing with a lot of fight, a lot of confidence when I see them play. Rosanna Shellnut. They got a non-conference win against Winthrop earlier tonight. Georgia's got the weekend off. They're the ones sitting in second place right now in the SEC. Florida's nine and three, Georgia 11 and four, and South Carolina's eight and four. Unfortunate news for Georgia this past week. Their ace pitcher, Brittany Gray, done for the season due to an injury. Off to an All-American type campaign, the type of campaign that could pitch you and your team to Oklahoma City yeah. with how she was throwing. 0-2. Strike out of Shellnut, two down. Now, that being said, Georgia is still one of the best offensive teams yep. in the country. Great combination of speed and power, so... Certainly, all is not lost for Lou Harris Champers team, but that is a big loss, losing Brittany Gray. There's Danny Morgan for her first plate appearance. Florida State's in a similar situation this upcoming weekend going up against Boston College, too. Team that's really improved this year. BC, nice turnaround for them. 19 wins this year. They're going to be christening a new stadium when Florida State comes into town this weekend. In fact, Florida State, you were talking about Florida's travels. Florida State's leaving at about 5 a.m. tomorrow to head to Boston. They're actually going to the Yankee-Red Sox game at Fenway Park tomorrow. 
Morgan pops it up. Adams over, calling off Kavistad. Last chance for the Gators. A three-run Seminole lead in the first of these two meetings. Florida State going with the righty of Kylie Hansen, the senior transfer for them coming from Florida Atlantic, getting her first taste of this rivalry, mixing in her rise, her screw, even going down the zone with her drop ball, which is fairly a new pitch for her to work into the repertoire. Uh, coming into the ACC and playing with Florida State, only giving up two hits, does have five walks, a couple have seemed intentional, and then four strikeouts of the night so far for Hansen. Eight, nine, and one. Janelle Wheaton with her first at bat of the night to start the seven. Came in as a defensive sub at catcher in the last inning. Senior from San Dimas, California. Warren, one down. She's attacked this game, Adam, yeah. and I will use that word because that when I look at her pitch and attack these hitters, that is what comes into my mind. Throwing now 100 pitches in this game, but going right at these hitters, getting ahead, finding the zone early, and finding it often. Here's Ocasio. Smoked a double in the fifth. Now, we were talking about getting to the top of the order, but Ocasio's pretty good to have. Granted, she'd come in struggling. One for her last 19 entering action tonight. Now, this is a very good offensive player who's grown the last two years. Three and oh. Kavistad at the top of the order is on deck. Then DeWitt and Lorenz if they get there. Challenger again. Nine hole. You, you want to give her an opportunity to make an out. You don't want to give her a free pass. Ocasio pops it up. Claveman is in. Two down. Last chance for the Gators, it's Kavistad. Strike one. Strike two. You mentioned that 5 a.m. flight. I think that Kylie Hansen has that flight in the back of her <laughs> mind with the way that she's pitching and, her <laughs> and the rhythm that she's in. She's like, I'm going to get my team home to sleep so we can go catch that flight tomorrow. The boost dad stays alive. The first time in her career facing the Florida Gators, and Kylie Hansen goes the distance for a 4-1 Florida State victory. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kylie Hansen was not intimidated by the name on the front of that Gators jersey, and a lot of teams are. And, and you might say, well, why? Well, because they're a team that you continuously see on TV competing for a national championship, just like they did last year. And Hanson said, so what? I'm going at you. A tremendous career at Florida Atlantic University. Takes an injury last year, a grad student this year, wanted to find a home. I think they've taken quite kindly to Kylie Hansen here in Tallahassee. A complete game against Florida. A 4-1 Seminole victory.
We'll wrap it up when you come back. Just the third win for Florida State against their rivals under Lonnie Alameda, who's in her 10th season at the helm of Florida State. A 4-1 victory in Tallahassee tonight. Tone was set early. Two batters into the bottom of the first inning. Carson Gordon with an absolute blast to put the Seminoles in front. That set the tone nicely for Kylie Hansen. The grad transfer from FAU in her first career appearance against the Gators. Always gives your pitcher confidence in the circle to score in the first inning, but I don't even know if Kylie Hansen needed that extra bit of confidence because she had it all on her own with the way that she attacked this game. Mixing speeds, going down with her drop and up with her rise. A really good mix and a good game plan that they came up to go against this Florida offense. Five hits for Florida State. The Gators were held to just two. Ocasio takes the loss, her fifth of the season. Hanson gets 20 wins in her lone season at Florida State. The time of the game, just an hour and 41 minutes in front of 2,138 fans. The second highest attendance figure ever here at Joanne Graff Field. The highest also came against the Florida Gators. Over 2,500 last year when these two teams met. And these two teams will meet again on April the 25th in Gainesville. Big weekend coming up in college softball. You will be at your old stomping grounds at Texas A&M. And we're going to see a lot of ranked teams, especially out of the SEC this weekend. Yeah, there are going to be some really, really good matchups with a lot of meaning. Well, 4-1, to one, the final score here. Florida State with the victory over Florida. Jump to the playoffs is coming up next as the seedings are still undecided in the NBA. For Amanda Scarborough and our great crew, Adam Amin saying so long.